What's up, dude? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm sorry. Again, my voice is hoarse. I don't know how I keep losing my voice. It was like this afternoon and all of a sudden my voice just started getting raspy and I genuinely don't know why. So I'm very sorry. I hope it doesn't distract from today's case. So let's just jump right into it. On January 4th, 1992, Brian Graham and his friend, Sam Roberts, were driving from New York to California. They were both going to begin classes at UCLA, but they decided to take the scenic way and go south and then turn west. Um, they had been going to NYU, but then decided to go to UCLA, and they both got in with scholarships. So they are originally from New Jersey, but we're just going to NYU, and then... Um, they were gonna start the spring semester in January, I believe is how it went. That was either the spring, yeah, I'm pretty positive that's considered the spring semester. Let me just double check. That is actually the winter quarter for UCLA. So both of the boys were very academically smart. They had got in um, academic scholarships. They weren't like on sports scholarships or anything like that. So, I mean, really smart dudes. UCLA isn't an easy school, I've heard. When they got to Alabama, Brian and Sam decided to pull over at the Sunoco gas station and grab some snacks and drinks for the next leg of their trip. After they paid for their stuff, they got back in the car and drove off. And I mean, like, their receipt was long. They had bought a lot of things, but they're broke college students, so they were like really looking for the cheapest items in the store as well. Around 5 p.m., the Beecham Police Department got a call that there had been a murder at the Sunoco gas station. When the cops showed up, they found the clerk laying face down in a pool of blood. He had been shot in the face with a 357 Magnum revolver and died almost instantly. Upon further investigation, the cops figured out that the thieves had stolen cash from the register after shooting the clerk. Since there was no one around the gas station when the cap cops showed up, it was just on the side of the highway, um, on kind of the outskirts of town. There wasn't much else around it, so it was sort of the one of the first thing, like one of the first um, businesses that you came in contact with on your way into town. So it was like there were houses and stuff around, but it was still just kind of the more secluded area. They decided to ask around the neighborhood and see if they could get any eyewitness reports from the people that lived within the area. While there were cops asking eyewitnesses for their recount of what happened, other cops were driving around the area trying to find the car that the witnesses reported seeing, which was a green 1963 Pontiac Tempest. After getting the description of the car that the witnesses saw, the cops driving around quickly pulled over Brian and Sam because they were on that highway that this um, Sunoco gas station was right along. Brian was driving to UCL, UCLA in a green 1964 Buick Skylark. The pair was separated while being inter interrogated and Brian thought that he was being charged with shoplifting because here he'd accidentally put a can of tuna in his coat pocket and forgot to take it out while he and Sam were paying for their snacks because like I said, they bought a lot of stuff and they were just like carrying it all. So he just put it in his pocket, but then here he forgot to take it out. But obviously I think it's safe to infer that he didn't mean to steal it because they still paid for all of their other groceries. So why would you just steal a random can of tuna? I don't know, very strange. Brian mistakenly told the cop that he shot the clerk after the cop informed him of what he was actually being arrested for. So it wasn't really a confession, it was like, I shot the cop, I shot the cop. Like, as in like, you are you think I shot the cop? But of course he's in shock, so he's like, not speaking very clearly. Brian and Sam pled not guilty at their arraignment. During the preliminary hearing, one of the fir first witnesses was an elderly woman who claimed to have heard gunshots while sitting on her porch and then saw two young men running out of the gas station and hop into a green car. However, during the defense's cross-examination during trial, it was soon revealed by a test conducted by Brian and Sam's attorney that her eyesight was so bad that there's no way she could have accurately identified the two men who ran out of the gas station. And like I said, she was an elderly woman. The cop that interrogated Brian was put on the stand and he read a transcript of Brian's confession, which really wasn't like a confession, but it was because it, you know what I mean? There was enough evidence for the judge to take the um, case to trial. 
The prosecution did have a surprise witness, George Williams. George Williams was a special automotive instructor for forensic studies for the FBI, and he testified that the pattern and chemical analysis of the tire marks that were left at the crime scene matched the tires on Brian's car. He even took a sample from Brian's tires to, you know, cross analyze, and they unfortunately matched. However, later on it was revealed that the tires that were on Brian's car at the time were the most common tire to be on a car in America. So that didn't really like help a lot. I understand where the prosecution was going with it. Like it made total sense and that's something that we would analyze today even. But back then, I mean like it was just such a common tire that and size too that it was like, okay, that kind of doesn't hold a ton of water, but I see where they were going, so fair enough. The defendant's lawyer brought up his fiance to testify as an expert witness on cars. He showed her a photo of the tire marks made from the getaway car at the crime scene and asked her if it was possible that Brian's Buick Skylark could make those tracks. She said that no, it was not possible because the Buick didn't have pause attraction. Pause attraction is a limited slip differential that distributes power equally between both the left and right tires. She also pointed out that when the left tire went up on the curb, the right tire stayed flat and even along the road. The Buick Skylark had a solid rear axle, so if the left tire would have gone up on the curb, the right tire would have tilted out and ridden along its edge. However, the car that made the tracks at the crime scene had an independent rear suspension. The 1964 Buick Skylark did not have an independent rear suspension. In the 60s, there were only two other cars in America that had pause attraction and independent rear suspension. Those cars were the Corvette, which could never, and I mean never, be confused with the Buick Skylark, and the 64 Pontiac Tempest. And since both of those cars were made by GM, they were both available in metallic mint green paint. After she got off the stand, Sheriff Farley went up. He had done some digging and he found that there had been a 63 Pontiac Tempest driven by two boys who fit the defendant's description and had been arrested two days prior in Jasper County, Georgia. The car was stolen and had the same model tires as Brian's Buick Skylark. The two young men that were driving the Green Tempest and had been arrested also had a 357 Magnum revolver in their possession, the same gun that had been used to kill James White. The state dropped all charges and Brian and Sam were let go completely free of any charge brought up against them. I'm sure some of you have caught on by now, but if you haven't, this case is not real. It comes from a movie. This is a case that happened in a movie, and I would like you guys to comment down below if you know which movie this case appeared in. Um, I will name the movie in tomorrow's video right away in the beginning if you can't guess it or can't find it on Google. I did change the names of the people in the case because I didn't want to make it too easy, so I just thought that this would be something kind of fun and different to do. I'm sure towards the end, some of you guys had to have started to figure it out because it's a very famous movie and I used a couple of quotes directly from the movie as well. Not, I didn't use the entire scripts or like section um, of dialogue that's like incredibly famous from this movie, but I, like I said, I just thought this would be kind of a fun thing to do and it might be something that I start doing on my channel more often. Is this case real or fake? Was it in a movie or did it happen in real life? And then it'll be up to you guys to try to figure out. But yeah, let me know if that's something you guys would be into because I think it could be kind of interesting interesting there are cases in real life that are so crazy it's like they have to be from a movie and then there are some movie cases that seriously could be real um but they're in a movie so let me know how you guys feel about that but like i said if you can't figure out which movie this is from either i guess read the comments down below or i will tell you guys in the beginning of tomorrow's video thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to tune in to tomorrow's video bye guys